Good evening, welcome to New Vision TV News. I'm Lydia Lakuonyero. Tonight we are bringing you stories that are making headlines in Uganda. And in our first story, the government of Uganda has handed over Rwandans who had been accused of various crimes and were in jail. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sam Kutesa, handed over nine Rwandan nationals to the Rwandan High Commission and Immigration Office today morning at the International Conference Center, where the ceremony was witnessed by the Rwandan ambassador to Uganda, Frank Mugambaje, Major General. The General Court Marshal yesterday released the suspects after charges of abduction and illegal possession of firearms against them were all withdrawn. Now, Amina Navidia was at court and brings us the story. A sigh of relief was written on the faces of seven Rwandan nationals yesterday when the army court based in the city suburbs of Machinde set them free. They'd spent close to two years on remand. The General Court Marshal Chairman, Lieutenant General Andrew Guti, released them after prosecution requested the accused to be discharged. While addressing journalists today, Kutesa said the government withdrew the charges in line of the uganda rwanda Memorandum of Understanding that was signed in Angola's capital of Rwanda last year. Now, in line with the Rwanda Memorandum of Understanding signed in Angola between the Republic of Uganda and the Republic of Rwanda on the normalization of relations between the two countries and in the context of the good we are being exhibited in an effort to normalize, normalize relations between our two countries. The government of Uganda has withdrawn charges against nine Rwandese nationals that were undergoing prosecution in the court martial for various offenses. Two more Rwandans were handed over in addition to the seven who were released by the court martial. Being handed over to the Uganda Immigration Authorities in the presence of His Excellency the High Commission of Rwanda for repatriation back to Rwanda today. It is the hope of the Uganda government that the Rwandese authorities will reciprocate the gesture of goodwill that we are making today. I wish to reiterate Uganda's commitment to full normalization of relations between our two countries and to further assure, assure you that any other any outstanding issues and concerns will be addressed in an open and transparent manner. The nine handed over are Rene Rutangujira, Emmanuel Wamucho and Augustine Rutai City, Charles Biaruhang, Etienne and Sanzi Bahizi, Cloud Iyakademie, and Pacific Bahati Mungenga, alias Ilunga Monga Nzeyiman Haman, and Ulayeneza Gilbert. The minister reaffirmed that Uganda is committed to the full normalization of relations between the two countries and noted that the repatriation is an act of goodwill. We have drawn charges by entering the lawyer prosecute and charges they were being held for and the arrests they had been under were not arbitrary. But to withdraw charges for us we think an act of uh, goodwill which we consider, which we hope will be reciprocated by the Rwanda government by dealing with the other issues we have raised with them. Meanwhile, Frank Mugambaje said the repatriation is a step in the right direction. I would like to start by saying that this we are witnessing is a step in the right direction. I'd like to welcome my nationals back with the freedom they desire and deserve. Murakazane is Mwaka Mushakan Mahoro Mukidi. I am appreciating this as a step in the right direction. Tension rose in early 2019 after Rwanda closed its Gatuna and Chanika borders and issued a travel advisory in which it strongly warned its citizens against traveling to Uganda. Story compiled by Amina Navide for New Vision TV. 
Now, six people have been confirmed dead following an accident at UK Mall in Kansanga along Gaba Road. Three others were rescued. The incident is said to have happened this morning at around 11 a.m. Andrew Senyonga was on ground to witness this unfortunate incident and now brings us the story. <laughs> In December, construction firm SMK House Limited embarked on laying the foundation for construction of UK Mall in Kansanga, a city suburb, digging the foundation up to 14 meters deep. However, during the beginning of the construction today, the soil at the site collapsed, claiming lives of six workers and injuring others. <laughs> Ronald Okoth, one of the three survivors, narrates that early in the morning, a group of 30 workers were dispatched to start the Mollis Foundation construction. We are preparing the ground to lay the concrete slab when the soil on the sides caved in and covered some of us. He added that the soil covered him for over 10 minutes and survived by the grace of the Lord. I was not rescued as the team had been notified that all victims and survivors had been removed. Later, I dug soil with my hands and escaped. The other survivors were Emmanuel Dong and Bernardo Nyango. The site hosted over 200 workers who were later today evening discharged until further notice. <laughs> Patrick Onyango, the Kampala Metropolitan Police spokesperson, identified the deceased as James Ocho, Robert Okecho, Martin Wari, Nicholas Ocheng, Richard Etienne, and Joseph Oburu, or residents of Salama Road, Zone B, in Makindia Division. The bodies were taken to the city mortuary as the police waits for their relatives. According to Nyango, the police has taken over the site as they hunt for the owner of the building, who is identified as Wumal Katongole. He added that the four men at the site also disappeared. He said they would presume that there are no more bodies in the ground because those who survived accounted for the dead. According to the deputy chief fire officer, Hassan Kihanda, they were caved in because it was not well retained. Now, 68% of water in Kabarole district is contaminated with feces from pit latrines, hence the need for people to embrace modern eco-sun toilets. Now, this was revealed by the district health inspector, Olive Tumhairwe, during the function at Karangura County headquarters in Kabarole district. Wilson Asimwe reports. Speaking at a recent function at Karangura Subcounty Headquarters, Olive Tumheire, the district health inspector disclosed that the use of pit latrines, especially in mountainous subcounties, has greatly contaminated water sources. She said this has increased cases of diarrhea, typhoid, among other waterborne diseases in the population. Tom Hare attributed the consumption of unclean water to rampant open defecation, including improper waste disposal. She observed that the intake of contaminated water is likely to spread waterborne diseases among residents, adding that there was need for the people to embrace the construction of eco sun latrines in the mountainous areas. The eco sun toilets are constructed at the surface without excavating a pit, and after several years of usage, the human waste gets dry and is used as manure. Eco sun toilets are waterless toilet systems marketed in developing countries as a solution to the poor water and sewage coverage in urban centers. The system uses natural biological processes to break down human waste into a dehydrated, odorless material which looks like compost. Tim Harris said people should embrace the construction of eco sun toilets because the latrines have led to the contamination of water in many areas of the district. However, many residents blame the district officials for failure to close some of the water sources after the district survey indicated that they had contaminated water. Jovian Mugabe, a resident of Bukuku, say majority of the boreholes were supposed to be closed as recommended by the district health department. However, most of them are still in use and majority of residents prefer borehole water to tap water. Many people cannot afford tap water in their homes and even those who have taps in their homes fetch from the boreholes and streams because they cannot afford the bills. 
Richard Rauhinga, the Kauru District Local Council 5 chairperson, encouraged people to adopt and construct eco-sun toilets, technology if they are to fight the disease burden. He disclosed that most of the diseases treated in health centers and hospitals are associated with hygiene and sanitation, which vice should be reversed. The Kaurori District Deputy Chief Administrative Officer Emmanuel Sempala directed all sub-county chiefs and community development officers to compile a list of all people without latrines in their homes for arrest. Sempala said sub-county chiefs must first sensitize people on the importance of a latrine at a household and after three months of the culprit's failure to construct them, they get arrested. Ediga Muganzi, the team leader for Natural Resources Defense Initiative, an NGO operating in the Ranzori region, said with funding from the Belgian government and Protos, they are promoting the use of Ecosan toilets as a solution to the sanitary problems. Muganzi said the few low-depth latrines in Karago Town Council are either filled up or not function at all and that with such a scenario it is common to see people relieving themselves in the bush. Muganzi said many villages of Karago, the deepest one, can dig is four feet before reaching the water. He said that through the project beneficiaries contribute some money and protos incurs all other costs. Muganzi adds that this project is aimed at offering people good toilets as well as protecting Mpanga River because all the streams which people use as latrines pour their water into Mpanga and it is the source of water for many people in Kawarole and the nearby districts. Well, you're watching New Vision TV News. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll have more stories. Welcome back from that break. You're watching New Vision TV News. Now, several cattle markets in Sembabule district have been closed following a foot and mouth disease outbreak. Affected markets include Luemi Yaga, Lumejere Ntusi, Kabanswere, Luwebi Takuli, and Chiemamba village in Liakajura sub-county in Liatonde district, which borders... Sembawale district. Well, following the disturbing reports, the sale and purchase of livestock such as cattle, goats, sheep and pigs and their products including meat, milk and ghee have been prohibited. Now Davis Buyondo is in Sembawale district and brings us a story. This follows the closure of markets in Mitima and Lugushuru sub-counties in August 2019 following the outbreak. The recent operation was effected amid riot police deployment to contain aggression from herdsmen who defied the quarantine. The agitated herdsmen first protested the closure of Rumegere Market in Intusi sub-county last week, claiming the quarantine was politically influenced. As a result, Dennis Musingzi, the Sembabwe District Police Commander, deployed the riot police to contain the rowdy herdsmen. According to Francis Senkoto, the chairperson cattle traders in Sembabwe, the circumstances surrounding the quarantine are not clear since Musingzi never had a formal order to close the markets. He said that they kindly asked him to present a letter from the Commissioner and More Health, the District Production Office of V or district veterinary officer, but he never had it. They tried to defy his orders, but they overpowered them. Senkoto added that FMD was only detected in Mitima, where the blood samples from the cows were taken at the National Animal Disease Diagnostic and Epidemiology Center in Tebe and tested positive. He further referred the letter by the Commission on Animal Health dated 7th, 2019, which only stated Mitima and Lugushuru as infected subcounties. Senkoto noted that Remiag and Lumegere were excluded and have been operating there freely until the closure came abruptly until further notice. Sembawal is in the cattle corridor and people's livelihoods chiefly depend on cattle. Deo Yarhanga, one of the affected herdsmen, said that the cattle quarantine comes at a time when the district is grappling with the dropping milk prices. Biarhanga noted that when milk dropped from 800 shillings to 300 shillings per litre, their hope was only in selling cattle to look after their families. He added that they get cattle dealers from Kasese, Kampala, Bwera, Uganda, DRC, Boda, Masaka and other parts of the country. He argued that the traders and transporters pay a lot of money in terms of fuel to reach the markets. Now closing the markets without a formal letter poses many questions in addition to the loss incurred by cattle dealers. 
John Kamjisha, Remyaga Sub County Councillor, condemned police for closing the market without a letter, saying there's a hidden motive behind the quarantine. He explained that FMG is in Mitima, which is over 40 kilometers from Remyaga, appealing to the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Industry and Fisheries and the District Production Authorities to intervene in the matter for redress. Kamsha noted that the cut of business contributes reasonable revenue to the district, but whenever they close the markets, the district loses revenue. According to Dr. Emmanuel Kawoya Karunji, district production coordinator, they are following certain guidelines in the previous letter from the Commissioner Animal Health. He said the guidelines include closing cutter markets that are within 20 kilometers radius or distance from the already quarantined area. He said Lumegere is just seven kilometers from Remiaga, Kabaswele is three kilometers from uh, Chemamba, and by default, Mitima Rugushuru, and by default, must be quarantined. Maybe the infection rate will have reduced in a few weeks. It will depend on the commissioner, who is the overall authority. Kawaya noted the commissioner visited Mitima in November and confirmed risk factors that had reduced, but over 100 cows were still carrying the virus. He added that the matter was politicized and blown out of proportion, yet they are following policy guidelines to control the spread of the disease. Dr. Ronald Bameka, the district veterinary officer, says the district is on high alert and has restricted cows from Sembaule, which is already under quarantine. He said the Chemamba was closed but under strict surveillance to ensure animals do not cross on either side to spread the disease further. Being Kato districts, the Antonia and Zimbabwe are prone to FMD outbreak. They were among the 14 districts that were quarantined in 2017. Others were Luero, Nakaseke, Nakasongola, Mubende, Chiboga, Chankwanzi, Bushenyi, Ntungamo, Sheman, some parts of Karamoja, Isinjiro, and Chiruhura. The FMD is an infectious and sometimes fatal viral disease that affects cloven hoofed animals, including domestic and wild bovide. Story by David Buyondo. Now Douglas Mowiru reports that renowned cranes fan Jackson Sewanyana, also known as Uncle Money, could spend the rest of his life in prison if convicted of manslaughter. Sewanyana was charged together with his co-accused Benson Senyonga. We have more on the story. The offence contravenes sections 187.1 and 190 of the Penal Code Act and calls for a life imprisonment and conviction. On appearing before the Bugana Road Court, Chief Magistrate Mariam Ayo Akelo, today a senior police officer, Detective Sergeant Ronald Kokalo, pinned the duo for having beat Siraj Tumsime Akim to death. Prosecution alleges that the Sewanyana, Senyonga and others still at large during the night of August 16, 2019 at Kasubi Zone 4 in Kampala District and not fully caused the death of Siraj Tumsime Akim, an act contrary to sections 187.1 and 190 of the Penal Code Act. Okalo testified that the accused tied the deceased hands and legs, beat and brutally kicked him to his unconsciousness, hence his later death. Sewanyana, Senyonga, and three others on the run took the deceased near a sweet potato garden while killing him, accusing him of having stolen a phone. They beat him into coma, then brought and dumped him to Namungona police station reception as he could not talk, all his clothes torn and bloody. He added that all this happened after the accused arrested Tumsime from Monaco Trading Center, suspecting him of having stolen a phone. During the deceased arrest, Tumsime beat the accused to allow him drop his 240000 and a national identity card he had in a pocket to his friend David Birunji, a butcher at Monaco, which they did. Upon cross-examination, the accused lawyer Ronald Chizito tasked Okalo to clearly explain if only two people were involved in the alleged manslaughter. However, the witness answered that there are other three suspects still on the run and will be arraigned in court upon their arrest. Prosecution led by senior state's attorney Timothy Merit told court that they had crossed their case, having presented six witnesses. This prompted the trial magistrate to adjourn the case to January 16, 2020, for the defense to put their final submissions. Story by Douglas Mubidu. And now for a business segment with Lynn Komugisha.
In business tonight, the government is in a budget deficit of 681 billion in the first quarter of the financial year 2019-2020 after failing to raise the anticipated revenue. While presenting a budget framework paper for the financial year 2020-2021, the state minister in charge of planning, David Bahati, said that revenues are lower than what they had projected in the first quarter. He says that the only alternative for the ministry is to seek mandate from parliament to borrow domestic $600 million to finance the budget. One of the routes we have taken is uh, increased domestic borrowing. And as you know, we already have now a request at Parliament of $600 million US dollars to finance the budget because we have a challenge with the revenue. We have $600 million US dollars to finance the budget. And actually, we are requesting the Committee of National Economy and hopefully when it comes to the House so that you can help us pass this, so that we run the operations of government. Because you had given us a ceiling of domestic borrowing of 2.1, 2.3 trillion. Now we have to increase that by an extra no, two. Yeah, we have an extra. On the revenue side. Yes. The spike in oil prices due to the escalating conflict between the United States and Iran is causing investors to worry that U.S. corporate earnings will be crippled by rising energy costs. While the energy sector would benefit from higher oil prices, other sectors ranging from shipping to manufacturing to restaurants would see their profit margins compress as gasoline prices rise. Some investors said they were acting more defensively against this backdrop. Though at $70 a barrel, the price of oil remains far below the level that would send the United States into an immediate recession. Higher energy costs at a time of increasing geopolitical risks are likely to leave investors and companies skittish fund managers and analysts said. Over the last year, the price of oil has jumped nearly 25%, according to refinitive data, raising costs for companies across the economy and leaving less money in the pockets of consumers. The conflict between the United States and Iran escalated early today with an Iranian missile attack on U.S.-led forces in Iraq, sending S&P 500 futures down more than 1.5% before retracing. They were last down 0.2%. Those estimates are largely based on assumptions that economic growth will rebound in 2020, though corporate earnings are thought to have fallen by 0.6% in the fourth quarter of 2019. Companies will begin announcing their results next week. Thank you, Lean, for the business report. And from our local sports today, KCCA FC got its first ever win against Mbarara FC. Now, Patricia Turia Hewa was on the ground to capture the celebratory mood and now brings you the story. <laughs> KCCFC overcame Mbara City of in the match day two of the Star Times Uganda Premier League second round at the Star Times Stadium Lugogo. At halftime, the game ended in a draw, but Philbert Obenchan gave the Mutebi boys a rare win with a goal in the 51st minute of the game. <laughs> The Kasasura boys were seeking for their first ever win against the Ankole Lions and perhaps revenge from the first round where they were beaten 2-1 at Kacheka Stadium. Barra City was without striker Paul Muchirezi who recently joined Vipers FC on a free transfer while KCCA was without Mustafa Kiz and Alan Okello due to injuries they sustained during the Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup the Uganda hosted last year. We had anticipated that KFC would play three at the, the back, but for our supplies, they went for four. <laughs> so we are going to guard there, that's why we are, we are, we are looking for a, a, a formation that can counter-attack the, the three, five. It was down to fitness, that's, what, that's all I can say. Mostly the transition from middle field going forward, we are not sharp enough. If we were, I, I think the few chances created, maybe we would have put in one. 
They were joined by Kezron Chizito and Simon Serunkoma, who was suspended for two months by coach Mike Mutebi of laziness and lack of commitment to the club. The result left the Kasasura boys in the second position on the log with 35 points from 16 games. From Barasit, I feel they were very, they were very structured. Yes, we did not have it. As, we are supposed to have it. Credit to them because they forced us to have it. But. Uh, Overall, I thought uh, Mbara City really put up a very good challenge. And you could see they did not play to come and just stop us to play. Uh -huh. They were trying to also do us to play, try to attack. The Uganda Premier League will return Friday with full games. Story by Patricia Triahewa. Well, congratulations to the Kasasiro boys. That was New Vision TV News with me, Lydia Lakonyero. Thank you for watching. And for more of our videos, find us on www.newvision.co.ug forward slash videos. We'll leave you with the fact file.